Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where we will discuss topics about how to push a STAD Pro physical model to the iTwin analytical synchronizer. In this particular video, we will take a closer look at the loads in our newly created iTwin repository. This iTwin repository was created by a push from STAD Pro. In the iTwin repository, all of the load cases and load combinations in the load case objects group have been brought over from the STAD Pro physical modeler. Expanding this list, we will be able to see all of those load cases and load combinations along with any of their properties that are assigned to them. In addition to that, individual load items have been brought over from the STAD Pro physical modeler as either a member load or a service load. Now, how does the iTwin analytical synchronizer obtain this information from the STAD Pro physical modeler? Let's take a moment and return to STAD Pro and review the loads that were pushed to this repository. So now as we turn our attention to our STAD Pro physical model, which was used to create the iTwin repository, we will be able to review the load cases and load items that were defined. This particular model contains primary load cases, load groups, and seismic definition load cases. Let's go ahead and start with the primary load cases. All of the primary load cases, along with their load types, have been successfully brought over from the STAD Pro physical modeler. Each of the load items defined in these primary load cases and applied directly to the nodes, members, panels, and surfaces have also been pushed to the iTwin repository. Next, let's take a look at the seismic definition load cases. As you can see, these load cases reference the seismic definitions from the catalog page. Load definitions are calculated by the STAD Pro Analysis Engine and won't get pushed to the iTwin repository. And that's important to understand when working with this workflow. Lastly, all load groups you'll notice, including the loads assigned within those load groups, will also not be pushed to the iTwin repository. So as we're finished reviewing this model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, it's important to note that if you want to push your magnitude and location of the loads from your STAD Pro Physical Modeler to the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer, you should definitely define those loads as load items within primary load cases. Now that we have reviewed our primary load cases and our load items in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, let's take a closer look at those loads and how they appear in your iTwin analytical synchronizer. The first thing we're going to start with is our primary load cases, which can all be found in the load case objects list. What you're going to notice is that each load case has been successfully brought over from the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. If you select the checkbox for each of these load cases, you'll be able to see some various information regarding that load case, including whether or not self-weight was included in that load case and the load cause. Now, if you do plan on sending this iTwin repository to another structural application, this is the piece of information it would need to generate load combinations later. In addition to that, various types of load items were also brought over from the STAD Pro physical modeler. And those will all be found in, and those will all be found assigned to a particular object within your iTwin repository. So let's go ahead and start at the top of the list. And the first load items we're going to see are our curve force member loads. Let's go ahead and select one of these. Each load within your iTwin repository 
will be assigned to a particular type of member, whether it be a node, a member, or a surface, and it will be assigned its appropriate load case. Now, if I take a look at the properties window for the load that I currently have selected, I would be able to see some various pieces of information, including the magnitude of the load. If I double click on the load magnitude, I will be able to see the load table. Now here I can see that this is a distributed member force and it's acting in the negative global Z axis direction. Now it is important to note that all iTwin repository models will have your Z axis as your vertical axis. And that's true even if you had set up your Y axis as your vertical in your STAD Pro environment. So all of those are converted to the appropriate coordinate system within your iTwin repository. In addition to that, we'll be able to see the location of this force, the load case it's assigned to, and the member in particular that it's assigned to. Now I can scroll on down and I can see various different load items that have been applied under different load cases. So let's go ahead and collapse that list again. And then we're gonna scroll on down and we're gonna find our point forces. So these will be any of your nodal loads that were applied to either members or nodes within your model. Here, if we went ahead and select one of them, again, we could see our properties, which will indicate the forces that were applied, the location and direction, along with, of course, the members they are applied to and the load case. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at our surface member load. And here we'll be able to see any of the surface loads that were applied to the surfaces within our model. When I select a surface force member load, I'll be able to see the properties dialog appear in the left-hand pane. This will give me information regarding the magnitude of the load and its location, the direction it's being applied in, the surface it's being applied to, and the load case that it was assigned within. Now, what is important to note is that for this particular model, I actually did apply a linearly varying surface load to my wall to represent my wind load, which again is possible within the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, and that information was successfully pushed to our iTwin analytical synchronizer. The last thing I want to take a look at specifically are the line loads or distributed member loads that are being applied to the members that are roof level. Now, what is important to understand is that when I was in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, panels were modeled at the upper roof level and were used to distribute a uniform dead load and live load to the supporting members. Now, panels within the STAD Pro Physical Modeler are non-structural elements. They are used specifically for the purposes of just distributing a load to the perimeter members that are supporting that particular area. As we can see, the program did automatically calculate the resulting line load on each of the members that were surrounding the panel, and that's the information that was brought over into the iTwin analytical repository. Now at this point, this concludes our discussion regarding the load cases and load items that were pushed from the STAD Pro Physical Modeler to the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer. So let's go over very quickly what we learned in this video. All of your primary load cases that were defined in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler have been successfully pushed over to the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer. All of the load items that were assigned to members, surfaces, nodes, and panels were also successfully pushed into the iTwin repository. The loading information that was not included in this repository are any of your load definitions or also reference load cases or load groups. At this point, this concludes our discussion for sending loads from the STAD Pro Physical Modeler into the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.